I wonder what would happen if we put a nuke down a giant hole and blew it up, thought the smartest men of 1957. And then they did it. As World War II ended and the Cold War began, the U.S. began testing nuclear weapons in a wide variety of scenarios and locations. A number of these were codenamed Operation Plumbob, and it's a name that I honestly can't assign if I love or hate. Guess I'd need to hear it in a rap song. In addition to murdering a bunch of livestock and buildings and stuff in a series of 29 nuclear tests in the Nevada desert, they also briefly turned the Earth into a low-rent Death Star. Due to the obviously problematic nature of detonating a bunch of nuclear weapons on the Earth's surface where we live, and imminent restrictions on doing so, the aforementioned geniuses decided to explore alternative venues. And given that manned spaceflight was still a decade away, though Sputnik 1 was launched a month after Plum Bob, there were really only two options. Up or down. And they tried them both. First, we tried detonating a nuke really, really high in the air and made five red shirts stand directly under it. goes. The rocket is gone. We felt a heat pulse, a very bright light, a fireball. It is red. The sky looks black about it. It is boiling above us there. It is rapidly losing its color. There is the ground wave. It is over, folks. I should note that all five men on camera were volunteers. The one operating that camera, though, George Yoshitake, was super not. But anyway, these five were scientists and they volunteered to do so, but I wasn't a volunteer. Uh, I didn't find out until I got there. Not a surprise birthday party. I didn't know until I got there is not acceptable. <laughs> Somewhat surprisingly, all six of those men lived fairly long lives afterwards long lives of never being believed by anyone at parties. So after conducting tests at various altitudes and wasting a bunch of pigs in a Zeppelin, which, good job, I guess. Why bother? Some broad gets on there with a staticky sweater and boom, it's all oh, the humanity. Ah! It was decided that sending nukes underground could be a way to circumvent a lot of the problems with testing bombs on or above ground and would also act as a pretty impressive tour de force against the mole people, so two birds. The blood-lusting mole people storming from their subterranean caverns. We drilled a 485 foot hole, threw a nuke into it, and then welded a steel plate on top, which itself is fairly indicative of how much we knew about nuclear weapons at the time. The point wasn't actually to make an earth gun, it was to test nukes safely. And the steel cap wasn't supposed to be a projectile, it was merely there to help contain the blast, which it did not. Instead, the explosion propelled it to an estimated speed of over 149,000 miles per hour and into folk legend status. It is thought that at the time it was the fastest man-made object, a spot that it would hold for many years until the Helios 2 spacecraft launched in 1976, almost 24 years later. It is difficult to say exactly how fast said turtle door was going, however, as the only way of measuring its speed was by using footage of the blast from a high-speed camera pointed at it. A camera that captured the steel cap in exactly one frame. Footage of the cap wasn't released by the government, and the calculation was done using said footage by Dr. Robert Brownlee, the scientist conducting the experiment, so we pretty much have to take his word for it. But, as far as I can tell, it is still the most interesting man hole cover in the world. There is also some debate about whether the cap made it into space or not, and whether our first contact with an alien race will be hitting them with a piece of scrap metal from the universe's shittiest accidental planet gun. Let me know what you think happened to the cap in the comments. Play me out, Starkiller Base. <laughs>